guy Stevens, number of the movie The Warrior, his gang member, The Riff. Riff? Yeah, right! You're listening to the movie Raid. It's time for the movie Raid, and tonight's victim is actor Guy Stevens, known for his role in The Riffs in the movie The Warriors. Hello. Hello. How you doing, Mike? Fantastic, fantastic. So let's start with the location of The Riffs hideout. Location in the city, or was any other location? Location for the movie, my scene was shot in Manhattan on the west side, on 8th Street, I think it was, in a garage. That's where the Gramercy Riffs, in the Gramercy part of Manhattan, yeah, which is in real life. getting this role in the riffs having to uh be in first approach to it like did you think that financially this might actually help you out a little bit or was this just just one of those just live day by day because this was back in 1979 1978 uh, in terms of filming wise Uh, was this something that you thought this might have worked for you in terms at that moment as an actor or did you think this was going to be uh kind of a uh we'll see what happens and not really care for it at the time exactly you know something that's just I started thinking like that. Let me see something. I was on in the Bronx. I was walking as a family dog trainer. And I called up. Uh, happened to call up a guy I used to work for. I used to train dog, but it's Captain Haggerty. His name was Captain Officer J. Haggerty. Captain Officer J. Haggerty on the bottle of Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean was a real person. That's Captain, the bald head guy with the earring. His name is Captain Officer J. Haggerty. True, real person. I gave him a call in reference to uh, working dogs because he wanted me to stay in contact with him. Uh, I did a lot of attack work with him. As a uh, matter, matter of fact, President Noriega of Panama, we trained and sold a dog for him, and I had to be the trainer dog that went to President Noriega. But uh, I asked him to give him a call, it was in August, and he said, guy, give Jerry Ann a call, she has a movie that you could be in. So I gave Jerry, Jerry was, I understand, she was, I think she was Fire Force's double, but I understand, Jerry Ann was a stunt woman. I gave her a call, I met her on a movie on the set in Central Park, they were shooting hair. I said, Cam, I said, Cam, I'm, you know, I always wanted to be a stunt man. Always wanted to be a stuntman. We went on the set and they didn't use the dogs. But what happened? She took my number that year, 77, 78. She gave Captain a call. I happened to call the Captain. Coincidentally, boom, from right there. Came down and went down to a uh, location, Sylvia Faye. Sylvia Faye's casting, the casting lady down in Manhattan. I took off from there. From there, went down, we went down to the shoot, met Craig Baxley, one of the drivers for Dukes of Hazard. And uh, I met him. That was that. Got into the movie Warriors. Wasn't a Screen Actors Guild member. That day I get paid, I get paid good, non-union. To go from there, I went to war, started meeting uh, stunt coordinators. Uh, Cliff Cutney, I used to see the shoots in Manhattan, stop by, ask who was going to go back. So, when got my resume, he said, give me your resume picture. Then from there, to go off and met him. Cliff Cutney, in my resume, workout days, went out to work out. In terms of like getting into this role, even though there's a lot of very minor roles, and of course we know the the main main setting here is of course the gang, the Warriors. But having to be in just a part of the gang, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the gang leader, or lieutenant, or whatever. The fact is, like, how much of, of this role did you actually put into it? Did you think this was just okay? I'm going to just stand here and just act like a part of the gang, or did you actually thought that this was uh, much more than what it seems? No, I did. I said, you know, so I'm going to take it from here. From here. I stood there, I was uh, an extra, some opportunity, blessings just started to come through because I stuck with it. My goal was to be a stunt man, and I was good at receiving blows, meaning you throw a blow at me or punch at me. I'd make it look real, but what happened was to throw a blow back, it was hard for me because my arm would come out of my shoulder, you know, receiving and hard driving. And, you know, I didn't get them seen because I'm going to be honest with you, it's like, like, it hurt me that I dislocated my arm and I have a dislocated arm that keeps falling out. You're not hundred percent man, you could forget about, you know, the start work unless you get a little something that's not gonna affect your arm. And you know, I couldn't even throw, man. I couldn't throw seventy feet unless I was short fall out. And so you 
years later, in 86, I got surgery and they tightened me all up. And after that, but forget about it. It was over with, man. It was over with. So what I did was uh, I still with Cat Mahogany. I was doing my dog training. I still stuck with my dog training. You know, training dogs would be security dogs. I still with the dog training. What happened was I was getting work from the captain, like commercials, professional people, executives, anything that happened to do with a dog that protects you. The stunt work, I had to forget about that. Well, you know, reality was that uh, you're not going to be the stunt man. You want to be, just stick with the dog train. You want to be New York later. I did several scenes. I worked on all my, as a matter of fact, I met Dar Robinson. One of the great scenes he did to the guy doing a, a rehearsal stunt. Dar Robinson was always in Burt Reynolds' movie with the stunt man at his Sharky's machine. That fell out the 14th story. Those that got in with him, he called me. I got called for the movie Nighthawks. That's just the Simone and Billy DeWitt. My resume, but anyway, that same day I get Captain Cole, and let him know that I got a call from you. I make Dar Robinson a night hole. I say, okay, I'm glad you called. Guess what I'm working on now? That same day, I'm working on all my children. And I need you to train your dog for all my children. Even though I couldn't get in the work, doing stuff work, I would all uh, do maybe a commercial with the dog and all. Uh, work on all my children, train some of the on the set. That's what I was, you know. I stayed in tune with the. Uh, since this film was released, what what was the more advantages and disadvantages in the film, filming the film, and then outside of the film, like after the film was done? What was the more for you? Now you mentioned that since you you know, dislocated your arm and stuff, and, and having that's of course clearly it's a disadvantage. But like, were there other advantages and disadvantages performing the role? And then after the movie was released, was there anything that actually affected you personally as an artist, or as far as recognition, or anything else related? <laughs> done was, you know, I didn't think about it. what I should have done was got into the screen like the film. And at that, at that time, you need to say a few words. From what I understood, get your car, the screen like the film card and all. That's the advantage. But what happened, I didn't go for that. I, I took the guy that depressed, man. To be honest, I got depressed. That's where I was sitting down and hating myself is that the reason why I dislocated my arm because of, it was over fight. I jumped in my face. It broke me in. I hit him. And, wow, man, I forget that thing. I hit him. Matter of fact, he was a friend of mine. I hit him. He really provoked me, man. I was shook my arm out. It didn't mess me up. I got into a depressed thing. But it was, man. It was less than to be learned. You know, control me your temper. Thinking before you act. If you know, if I had uh, got my screen acting skill card, I would have got more. I would have got more. But, you know, things happened in the year 78. Disco, party, and, and what happened? Distractions came along. Partying, and, you know, you're that focused. Being a stunt man, which I had to say, well, you're not going to get do the stunt work that you want to do, which I want to do. I wanted to do building falls. I want to get at the building falls and what happened. Now, you need your arms for that, man. You need to know how to use your arms and control your balance up in it while you're coming down into whatever your air battery, your boxes. You know, I got depressed, man, because I, I couldn't do that, man. And it really it hurt. I get added to the fight and it, it would affect me down the road. It's life, man, but, you know, it's what it is, man. You know, I come to terms. Yeah, no. 
been changed, man, because the games are not like it. Well, the players are great. Yeah, you don't have these games like you used to. Since the release of this film uh, of the Warriors, the fact is, I mean, there are gangs, but they are the the kind that are so influenced, it, it, real or not real gangs. There are so many people that are being been influenced by this this particular film because this film was about honor and uniting. And some people could probably take it as a negative because of uh, you know the content in this film. But the fact is, these gangs all believe in the same thing. They all want the same thing. Cyrus was trying to get everybody to, to prove that they can unite. They can take over and uh, they're not right. taking taking no more crap for nobody and the fact is this has such a, a powerful a feeling a speech yeah. influence and since then like there you know so many people has been influenced by this film and that gives them the power to stand up the power to unite and, and uh, the most positive aspect and, uh, and you can imagine everyone's dressing up the warriors the orphans <laughs> the riffs punks i mean just all everybody it's just they're all in the same place and nobody <laughs> like like from the movie nobody is wasting nobody everybody's just having a, everybody's having a good time so with with you being a part of all of this and having to get this recognition you can look back at this and say you were a part of something that became such a big impact in cinema as well as culture and everybody's lives because every day every every other year or whatever they always have these the warriors events and anniversaries and all kinds of stuff and that, that's the best that's the best thing and uh, you know that's a really proud moment and even it doesn't matter if you were just standing there it doesn't matter if you were your face was in there the fact is you were <laughs> part of it the fact is that you were there and you lived right. you lived in a in an era that filmmaking was still very rough then and uh, especially when this film was being made yeah, there were real gangs back then too I mean there wasn't just play gangs yeah. there were some serious real gangs during the making of this film while on the set <laughs> achieving this recognition for you the fact is do you think this is something that from the warriors do you think like that speech do you think that you can apply this in today's society you think that would have been better hey mike a hundred percent you said that you said that well and you know it's true it's like uh, what was important a part of what he said when uh Cyrus says no one's basic no one you know the gangs at war in the street they all together standing and listening okay to this one guy they said we can do this we don't have to fight we're bigger than the cops we don't have to fight. Let's stop fight among each other. It was happening in real life. In real life, this actually happened. You know, with the gangs, it actually happened. They had a meeting up in the Bronx on 174th Street in Ho Avenue at the Boys Club. This actually happened. The gangs got together. It got bigger than it was now by all uh, having, what do you call it, expedition. But they get all, uh, we call that autographing. I mean, these people, I wouldn't, I never thought that it would be like this. I mean, you got warrior fans. If you see warrior page on Facebook, a warrior organization. It, what's going on is people don't just want to see they got enough warrior autographs. And what I was told yesterday, was, listen, we want other members, you know, you got the warriors, but what, what about the other gang? What about the, the Lizzie's, the orphans, the Ritz, the Pope, Nukes, the other people that made the warriors. Without them, without them chasing the warriors, hey, there's no warriors. Warriors running from over, you know, the people in the, the roller skates that were going to pump. Well, other than that, man, you know, I never thought it would be like this, man. You know, I went on Facebook, posted my picture of me in the Warriors. Hey, all of a sudden, my page is like, hey, you was in the Warriors? Good and Dave helps me out a lot. Dave helps me out. Yeah, he's like my manager. Things are going to happen this year, you know, with the war, you know, autographing. And he said to me, he's the guy, you know, they want other members of the movie in the Warriors. They want other members. I do have a request saying that could you say the line from the movie? Go and plug in any websites or any events that you're going to be attending to regardless regarding to the Warriors or any other projects that you might be working on or anything related. Or anything, but there are things that are being planned, planned and things me and my manager, you know, to uh, be there. It's going to work. It's going to work. I'll keep you posted on that. Well, there you have it, everybody. That is actor Guy Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, love you